think back to 2016. You think back to, of course, Kyrie Irving. Uh, he was huge. He's the reason why, I think at the very end, they ended up winning that in Game 7 at Golden State. How does this 0-2 deficit compare to the one that they were in two years ago when they went on to win it all? <laughs> you just said it, Kyrie Irving. You got a resident superstar that's playing alongside you. An individual that averaged 27 and 29, respectively, over those last two NBA Finals appearances. In this case, you have a LeBron James who's averaging 40. You have a LeBron James who's averaging 34 throughout the playoffs. The next leading scorer on the on Cleveland Cavs Cavaliers is Kevin Love averaging 14 and that's only on 39% shooting outside of that you got a 34 point to 14 point drop off and then after that nobody else on Cleveland is even averaging in double figures so you don't have an individual that's a playmaker that can create his own shot that can do damage with his own ball handling skills that's how, what the Cleveland Cavaliers has which makes LeBron James a one man army and a one man army ain't beating the Golden the State the funny Warriors. part is though is that again they are playing better this time around down 0-2 than they did two years ago with Kyrie but that was then, this is now. And, and leading into game two in particular, you have been one of many people, but probably the loudest of them all, shockingly, that has said, well, where is Rodney Hood? Where are some of these other players on the Cavaliers bench? Well, Ty Lu addressed that today. Uh, Listen. Uh, we're going to give Rodney a chance. Um, he'll get a shot um, and see how he does. So um, he's been working, you know, staying ready. And um, so we'll, we'll see. Okay. Hood has played a total of four minutes in the first two games. Yep. You heard what the coach said. Why do you think he's going to make such a big difference? Because desperate times call for desperate measures, and how many options do you have? Kevin Love is shooting 39% from the field. Who shot JR? Don't get me started with him. JR, you can't find him, can't hit anything. So we've got that problem. George Hill, 12 points in the first half, just three points in the second half. He's been impotent offensively. You've got to try something. By the way, Rodney Hood shouldn't be the only one seeing playing time. Kyle Corbin needs to be up in there. Yes. I've called for the benching of JR. No disrespect. I'm not saying don't play him. Bring him off the bench. But you've got to get a spark out of the gate. Do you realize that Kyle Corver in this series is the best shooter? He's got 44% shooting from three-point range in these playoffs. You didn't give him a boy. Didn't take a shot in the first half last game. Only finished with three shots for the game. That is unfathomable. The guy is your best shooter. Get him out there. Let him open Talking, things up. Yeah. Rodney Hood was averaging 17 a game in Utah. Maybe, just maybe, the greatness of LeBron James, not to be questioned at all. But you do dribble the ball a lot. You do hold the ball. And these are guys that are used to putting the ball on the floor and trying to make things happen for themselves. Not stand around playing the role of spectator, praying that the king will see them and give them the basketball. So if you have that situation, you've got to get these guys out on the floor Give them the freedom to play their game, whatever game they've got, and find out whether or not that's better than what you have. They were in game one. Game one was this, but that was because of their defense and the greatness of LeBron James. Both games they've struggled offensively. You've got to get something going. I know you know this, though. Rodney Hood playing for Utah against the Warriors last season was like one for 15 from downtown, so don't expect him to come and be the hero. Not you three. just need something else. You've got to try something. Okay. Listen, you can have bad shooting, but he is a 6'8 lefty. He can try something. Okay, Stephen A. Smith, can you tell he's ready? Can you tell he's fired up back later in the show to talk about oh, Stephen Curry and the amazing impact, maybe quietly, that he has had? Nobody